So prepare to make plague marines and pox walkers rain from the sky. Today we're talking about the Terminus Est Assault Force and how strong I think it is for the Death Guard. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In this video we're taking a look at the army of renown known as the Terminus Est Assault Force, basically the Death Guard infantry only army where you can deep strike and they have a bunch of other options. We'll look at its restrictions and the Outbreak Assault Special Rule, then the Warlord traits, stratagems, psychic powers and relics, and then finish up by talking about whether I think it's worth the trade off. Lots to talk about here, so let's jump straight into it. So the Terminus Est Assault Force is one of those new armies of renown from Warzone Charadon, the Book of Rust. You need to be all Death Guard, no mixing and matching, though generally pure Death Guard is the way to go anyway if you want those contagions. All your units must be Harbingers if you have a Plague Company on them. You can't take any vehicles, so no Rhinos, Plague Burst Crawlers or Bloat Drones. The Primarch is not going to be accompanying you, so you can't take Mortarian. If you take Typhus, then he must be your Warlord, though he does get a bonus trait, and if you choose to put any units into Strategic Reserve, it's going to cost you one command point more. That's restrictions every which way, to be honest. You're cutting out a sizable chunk of the Death Guard Codex, so there'd better be some decent payoffs for all these sacrifices. What you get for making your army a Terminus Est Assault Force is that Psychers can either choose to draw from the Fester Discipline instead of their standard one, you get access to a bunch of new stratagems, a Warlord trait, and a bunch of relics. Typhus himself will be able to get that extra Warlord trait for free on top of his normal Shamble Rot Plague trait, and perhaps the biggest change to the way that the army is played is that the Strategic Reserves can deep strike, so you can have Plague Marines and Pox Walker units popping out of nowhere greater than 9 inches away from the enemy. It would be getting a little bit command point intensive putting lots in Strategic Reserve, but it is quite nice for some Death Guard units, they are fairly slow, and will be even slower without Rhinos to transport them around and units like Plague Marines and Pox Walkers would really quite like to be getting very close to the foe if they can. Plague Marines can be made incredibly fighty with their various Plague Weapon upgrades, and Pox Walkers can deal out tons of mortal wounds, particularly in Harbingers. I think it's really quite cool to have a Death Guard army, where Deep Strike is the order of the day. Basically, when you pay for units being put in Strategic Reserve, you consult the chart on the right instead of the standard Strategic Reserve points. Each rank just costs you one more command point than it would normally. So what about the other things that you get for being a Terminus Est Assault Force then? First up we have one Warlord trait and only one, and it's called Harbinger of Death. Typhus will get this for free if he is your Warlord, and it does incentivize you to run him a bit, as then you can have both that and Shamble Rot for free. This one's going to be good for bullying the rank and file of enemy troops. If your Warlord's less than 3 inches away from an enemy unit that has a leadership of 7 or less, they lose Obsec, and they can't do any actions. In addition, you also gain plus one attack when the units are in range of this aura as well. Perhaps the best use of it could have Typhus run alongside a bunch of Pox Walkers or Plague Marines. They have Obsec, he takes Obsec away from light enemy troops. It means the objectives are basically going nowhere. I'd say it's perhaps a little bit situational. A lot of enemy armies are going to be leadership 8 or better, such as Space Marines. But when it comes into play, I think it'll feel quite nice. As for stratagems, there are four new options, and of course you get the unique Harbinger stratagem that allows you to reroll all hits for Pox Walkers in melee for 1 CP. That's the one that you can combine with the Mortal Wound stratagem for Pox Walkers to have a 20 man unit of Pox Walkers stack on average 11 or 12 Mortal Wounds on any target. Whenever that sort of combo goes off, it's going to be really satisfying to have your zombies drag down the most elite units of the enemy force. These Terminus S stratagems largely really double down on the Poxwalker tactics, giving you a lot more ways to play them. First up we have Rotting Tide, it's 2 command points or 3 CP if you use it on a unit of more than 10 Poxwalkers. This one's a nice redeploy and reanimation stratagem, you take a Poxwalker unit that's below half strength, you remove it from the battlefield and redeploy it with all models restored, less than 6 inches away from any board edge that your opponent doesn't control. As pox walkers are fearless, it's really quite likely that you might have one or two survive, and this one could be a very nice one to mess with your opponent's head, meaning that they really need to wipe out every single pox walker, otherwise you're going to be getting a whole load of them back. If anyone's played against orc boys with endless green tide, or chaos cultists with tide of traitors, you'll know it can just make dealing with the army as a whole a whole lot trickier, as it gives you another thing to demand your firepower to absolutely finish off units, and not give them the chance to get back. Next for 2 CP we have Pestilential Drop, it means that when a unit comes in from Deep Strike or from Strategic Reserve via Outbreak Assault, 
they get 12 inch contagion range for that turn so could potentially drop some minus one toughness on the outskirts of the enemy army. Seems okay if you are maybe trying to line up some firepower on the enemy units, though to be honest with only infantry units your firepower is going to be kind of limited. At the very best your ranged firepower is going to be bolters and combi bolters and maybe the odd blight launcher thrown in. I guess could perhaps be worth it if you do have lots of bolters kicking around and you have targets against which they're going to be significant, maybe dropping some gravis armour down to toughness 4. Next we have Unleash the Horde, which is another quite significant poxwalker buff and basically gives your entire army's worth of poxwalkers an extra plus 3 inches of movement and an extra plus 3 inches of pile in after you fight. I can imagine that most of these assault forces are likely to have 3 or more big units of poxwalkers. They're very slow normally, but this could actually make them quite fast, particularly in combination with advancing on any turns that you're not charging. Definitely could be the difference between making a charge and getting all of those mortal wounds and other damage off, or not doing so. And the pile in is kind of handy as well, you could definitely use that to help wrap and trap enemy units, or even just tie up more stuff that didn't really want to be in combat with poxwalkers and getting bogged down. Finally we have Callous Disregard, again it's two command points, and this one's the one that was shown off by Warhammer Community, and it allows your unit to shoot at an enemy unit when they're in melee with either Poxwalkers or Plague Followers, so Chaos Cultists basically. You will be minus one to hit when you're shooting, and any shots that fail to hit will hit your friendly models instead. It does mean that you definitely run the risk of taking some decent casualties for your trouble, but I guess that sometimes there might well be cases where it's worth it, say if you have the option to try and shoot down an enemy character that's tied up by your zombies. Paying the lives for a few pox walkers for that probably isn't a bad idea. For 2 CP I don't think it's an auto use. Again the best firepower that you're going to have access to is something like a bunch of bolters or blight launchers. But if you do have the chance to make some easy kills on an enemy unit that's tied up by your chaff, sometimes the 2 CP could be worth it. Especially if you even freed up your pox walker unit to be able to charge at something else. It sounds pretty fun that one and honestly quite fluffy. And I think it could be quite interesting in combination with something like Plague Spurt Gauntlets on Death Shroud Terminators too. They don't roll to hit, so they won't have any chance of hitting your friendless. Overall, I think that the stratagems are one of the strongest parts of this whole formation. That Rotting Tide is excellent. It's hard to argue with turning command points into even more chaff and getting extra mobility thrown into it as well. Pestilential Drop could be handy against some things. Unleash the Horde could get you more charges and get most of your army moving forward faster. And Callous Disregard could be a nice situational one that you can always have as an option in the back of your mind as combats unfold. Moving on, let's take a look at the Fester Discipline. We do have a full 6 spells here, and some of them are very interesting indeed. They will have to be decent though, as they are competing against some very good powers from the Core Codex. Gifted Infection is Warp Charge 7, 18 inch range, and gives minus 1 toughness. It doesn't stack with Contagions of Nurgle for more minus one toughness sadly, and to be honest with all the minus one toughness that you can hand out already, I'm not sure it's all that exciting, particularly when it still has at least a reasonably high chance of failure. Next up we have Lung Rot, again Warp Charge 7, and it's a debuff at 18 inches. We saw this one previewed, the unit can't advance, it can only declare charges against targets that are within 6 inch range, not 12, and if they happen to fail a charge at this short range, then they can't re-roll the result of that charge either. This one's really quite a powerful and nasty debuff, it basically just takes one enemy unit that wants to be in melee, and makes that melee very unlikely to happen indeed. Units like Bladeguard Veterans or any Space Marine White Scars are really not going to thank you for this one. Next we have Pernicious Dose, again Warp Charge 7, and this buffs one unit within 6 inches to reroll all hit rolls with Plague Weapons. This one's a pretty powerful buff, it could be pretty nice on Blight Lord Terminators with Bale Swords or Bubotic Axes, or maybe even a big tooled up melee plague marine unit. You could use it for some very accurate shooting with virulent rounds from a big unit of bolters, and I think it could be particularly fun when stacked with the Arch Contaminator Warlord trait, meaning that your plague weapons could get 4 rerolls to hit and 4 rerolls to wound, potentially on an enemy that's already minus 1 toughness. That could be pretty much guaranteeing the death of any one unit. Next we have Noxious Discharge, this one's Warp Charge 6, 12 inch range, the enemy takes one mortal wound, and any enemy units within 3 inches also take one mortal wound as well. I'd say perhaps the short range is the least helpful thing here, it could be really quite punishing to tightly packed enemy formations, but it does mean that your psyker really has to expose himself in harm's way, it's going to be very close to multiple enemy units, which could mean that he's not very likely to live till the next turn. Even if in the right circumstances this could deal out quite a few mortal wounds, I don't think it's going to be taken very much. Next we have Rotwind for Warp Charge 7, 
and this one's perhaps one of the ones that interests me the most. You target one enemy unit within 18 inches, and next turn, whenever it makes the attack, all of its weapons will have worse AP by 2 to a minimum of AP 0. Now against an armoured foe such as Death Guard, particularly when you have Terminators and Plague Marines in the mix, getting rid of the vast majority of the enemy's AP is a really powerful debuff, and you could have really threatening units become completely less so. Imagine this on a big unit of Deathwing Terminators with Thunder Hammers. Those damage 3 strength 8 hammers aren't going to be doing half as much if they don't have any AP whatsoever and you're saving on your normal armor save. Plasma weapons and last cannons are going to be far less bitey if they're only AP-1 and even things like melter weapons will only be AP-2 after this. If you can get your cycle within range of a threatening enemy unit then you can really not have to worry about them anywhere near as much the next turn, maybe focus on killing one unit, debuff the other with this and your opponent's in for a bad next turn whatever happens. Finally, for the Fester Discipline, we have Accelerated Entropy. Again, it's Warp Charge 7, this one's a 12-inch range one, and you roll off with an enemy model and add your toughness to the roll. If you score the same or more as the enemy, then they take a massive 3 mortal wounds on their units, but if the Dice Gods really punish your opponent and you roll double or more their result, then they will take a massive D3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Typically, your toughness value is going to be 5, and a lot of infantry that you might be targeting are going to be toughness 3 or toughness 4 means that you're very likely to win the roll off, and if you have Contagions of Nurgle about, I believe that they would affect this roll, seeing as it isn't an unmodified toughness roll, it's just the actual toughness value of the model that's being targeted. Not going to do you any good against vehicles or hard targets, sadly, but to be honest, I like this one a lot better than the other Mortal Wound one, Noxious Discharge. Overall, for the Fester Discipline, though, I think my favourite is the Rot Wind spell, with Long Rot and Pernicious Dose both being pretty powerful, and Accelerate Entropy being an interesting choice for a bunch of mortal wounds. Last up, we have really quite a good relic pool for the Terminus Est, with a fitting number of seven different relics to choose from. Filth Sensors gives you plus six inches to psychic power range, and with powerful debuffs such as Long Rot and Rot Wind available, having 24 inch range on those could be really good. You're going to have a lot more choice of what you can target, and you won't have to expose your psychic quite as much to do so. A pretty decent choice in combination with those two, I think. Mark of the Terminus Est is a pretty good all-round fighty character buff. They gain plus one strength, you can't re-roll wounds against them, and once per game you get to take one failed save and turn that into an automatic pass. A bit of extra strength is fine, the re-roll wounds thing I'm sure will come up occasionally, but I think that once per game ability in the last bit is actually perhaps the most interesting. You could potentially save that for a really quite high damage attack, essentially guaranteeing that your opponent is definitely going to need more damage to take down your character, and overall I think the combination is fairly strong for just one relic. Next we have the interestingly named Vomix's Virulent Blight. This one you apply to one plague weapon, and if it ever causes a wound, then it means that the wounded opponent's unit will get permanent benefits of one contagion of Nurgle on them. That's basically going to be minus one toughness, or shamble rot, presuming you're not running typhus. And to be honest, I don't think that this one's really all that great. If the unit survived the encounter with your lord and got away, it likely means that the enemy army might have chance to strike back against your lord and do good damage to them. And again, having minus one toughness on an enemy unit isn't going to make that much difference on this army. It'll help out your bolters, but if you win combat with them, you're going to be giving them minus one toughness anyway, so this is never going to be relevant. I think I'd go for a different option myself. Next up, we have a trio of different boosted weapons. Kanker is a Plague Plasma Pistol, 18 inches, strength 8, AP minus 4 and damage 3, and it's a Plague Weapon that doesn't overheat. Not bad but not outstanding, it might fry you a Space Marine or two over the course of the game. Rock Grip is a slightly boosted Power Fist or Plague Claw, it'll be wounding most things on 2s as it's strength times 3, AP minus 3, flat 2 damage, and it's a Plague Weapon, and has no hit penalty unlike normal Power Fists. I think I consider this more on a standard Lord with a normal Power Fist, as then you're getting the extra accuracy and also being a Plague Weapon, where that Plague Claw on the Lord of Virulence is already a Plague Weapon, so doesn't really care about the upgrade. The Strength times 3 will perhaps be most relevant on Toughness 7 vehicles. You'll be minusing their Toughness down to Toughness 6, so this will be double their Toughness on Strength 12. Finally for the weapons, we have the Reaper of Misery, and this one's a Man Reaper or Plague Reaper with Strength 6, AP-3, Damage 1, and you always get double the attacks. Quite nice that it's basically a Man Reaper where you don't really have to choose between the profiles. It's vastly better than the standard 2 attack profile, and it's arguably just as powerful as the one where you only get 1 attack and damage 2, seeing as this one doesn't give you minus 1 to hit, unlike that one. Finally, we have the Raiment of Atrophy, 
This one gives you plus one to the battle round in terms of contagion range for contagions of Nurgle. It doesn't stack with anything else that gives you plus one to the battle round for this ability, but still it will mean that your aura goes a little bit further. Maybe if you're not running Typhus and you're using another Warlord with Shamble Rot, then perhaps this could be a good pickup. Overall, as for these relics, I think perhaps the Filth Census, just the plus 6 inches to Psychic Power range, might be one of the best picks of the lot. Combined with the pick of the Fester Discipline, you could really have a Psyker that's going to be a thorn in your opponent's side. Otherwise, the Mark could be good on a fighty character or Demon Prince, and the Raymond might be useful on your Warlord if he has Shamble Rot as well. So that's an overview of the Terminus Est Assault Force, so is it going to be worth it, and is it worth giving up all these options? The major downsides, I'd say, are losing Mortarian, who while I certainly don't feel is essential for a strong Death Guard army, he is certainly a very powerful piece, and he's been cropping up in a lot of top tournament lists. Just chucking bloat drones, play bus crawlers, and rhinos out the window is a bit sad as well. They're all pretty strong units, it's a shame to lose the plague burst crawlers long range firepower, and the rhinos mobility for your troops. Finally, by committing to Harbingers, it means that you're not going to be getting some of the other excellent Plague Company buffs, in particular having access to those other Plague Warlord traits, such as the Gloaming Bloats to get rid of rerolls, or the Droning to half enemy movement. Shamble Rot will do a little bit of extra damage, but I just don't think it's on the same level as these ones. For things about the Assault Force that I think are okay, I think that the Relics are generally alright, they're not massively standout. I'm not sure I'm massively convinced compared with some of the ones that are already in the core codex. The Warlord traits are nice if situational buff to Typhus if you choose to take him, and I still have to remain a little bit unconvinced as to the deep striking mechanic of the army. You still have to pay a fair amount of command points to do so, and you could still potentially have Terminators as your deep striking threat. They're really strong, and they can also deep strike for free without having to worry about CP for strat reserves. I'm certainly not saying that mass deep strike plague marines couldn't do work, it just seems like doing something different for the sake of doing something different, as opposed to necessarily being better than the Terminators. The real positives for me for the company though, are those really nice Poxwalker stratagems, and if there's ever an army when you wanted to be absolutely maximising the amount of plague zombies on the board, then this one seems to be it. As you're not taking any vehicles anyway, you should have a fair amount of core Death Guard units already, allowing for plenty of Poxwalker thralls alongside. Bringing them back from the table edges with a stratagem, shooting into combat, and getting a bit more movement out of them is all great, and then unloading the Poxwalker Mortal Wound combo whenever you have a good chance. They're also really tough point for point with that Feel No Pain and Toughness 4, and a good way to throw down some very cheap obsec into the objectives. The other thing I think is strong is the Fester Discipline, particularly Rot Wind and Long Rot, combined with the extra range for casting. Could certainly give you a very powerful piece on a Psyker there, Though it does kind of have an opportunity cost, you have to weigh up how much it really is better than just taking powers from the Discipline of Contagion, which you could have done without all of these restrictions. Overall, I tentatively say that Games Workshop have done a fairly good job of balancing this army. I think there's enough really cool stuff and unique abilities to incentivize people to play it with the Poxwalkers, but you take away a bunch of other cool tricks, so you really have to go down this strategy and make it work. I certainly don't think that this is going to be the default way to play Death Guard in the future which is a good way of incentivizing a very different build within the Codex, which I think is generally a good thing. So let me know your thoughts on the formation down in the comments below. Is the Terminus Est Assault Force good, or is giving up the Primark and the vehicles just too steep a price to pay? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do try and keep up with Games Workshop's releases, as well as plenty of regularly scheduled tactics content. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos recently and would like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention that I have an Element Games affiliate link down in the video description below. Element Games is a decent UK based discount retailer, they give 10 to 20% off Games Workshop's products, and they've always been very reliable for me. If you click on the link before buying anything from them, a small amount goes to help support Auspets Tactics, and it doesn't cost you any more whatsoever. It can just be a way to help support if you were thinking about buying something anyway. Similarly, for people in the USA and Canada, I do also have an Amazon affiliate link, which again is down in the video description. That one works in basically the exact same way. Click the link, buy anything whatsoever off Amazon, and a small amount goes to help support the channel. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those links, it does make a big difference. In any case, thank you very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.